sidekicks. They've got a pretty rough ride. All they seem to get is the sloppy seconds of the main hero's life, they get less credit, much more ridicule from fans, and at best only have to look forward to getting killed so that the main hero can become even more brooding. And while you do get some standout fellows who you will gladly allow to fight by your side, the video game universe is littered with annoying, obnoxious, and downright shitty sidekicks. With this in mind, I'm Jules for WhatCulture.com, and here are 10 of the worst sidekicks in gaming. Number 10. Natalia Oh boy, what a way to start the proceedings. Okay, okay, hands up here who liked the Bond film Goldeneye. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, that's that's good. Okay, who here likes Isabella Skorupko, the actress who played Natalia in the film? Yeah, 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 good, that's about right. Now, who here hated Natalia in Goldeneye 64? There we go, full house. She was slow, got in the goddamn way all the time, and if you so much as, you know, try to encourage her along with a gentle slap or a little shot to the knee, game over. Come on! It was so annoying trying to keep her alive. She seemed to be sexually attracted to every enemy you fought, standing right next to them, allowing chunks to be blown out of her left, right, and center. Just get out of the f way then, you dense cardboard ass hat. Number 9. Ashley Graham. Ashley is a jug-eared twat with the life preservation skill of a dog who loves to chew electrical wires. But guess what? She's also the president's daughter, so kind of has to live through Resident Evil 4. Just so she can presumably come back to the states where she'll drink and drug her way right into oncoming traffic. The amount of times you'd be fending off the hordes of mutated evil only to hear her cry out like a bleating lamb would be in the thousands. She doesn't even try to move, preferring instead to apply the Jurassic Park mentality of enemies having vision-based movement so stays perfectly still. That doesn't work, Ashley dearest. Now please get up and move away from the slowly shambling man! Number 8. Roman Bellic. More like Roman Bellend, am I right? Yeah, yeah. A liar, a crook, and an altogether annoyance. You'd be justified in shooting him on sight for fibbing to you about having a lifestyle rivaling an oil tycoon and making you come all the way from Yugoslavia. But his worst habit, bar none, is calling you up in the middle of a firefight to go goddamn bowling with him. No, Roman, maybe another time. You know, maybe when I'm not having to garrote a man to death with cheese wire. A man baby with terrible habits and a terrible dress sense that does nothing to aid you in your quest in the slightest. Number 7. The Dog from Duck Hunt Man's best friend my duck shooting dick, this little bastard is just the worst. Rustling up ducks for you and then laughing if you miss these flying feathered fiends. What? Why? Why laugh at me? I, I, I feed you, I clothe you in the finest duck furs and you still laugh at me? The worst bit about this is that I can't even level out some discipline in the form of a bullet to the tail. What's that? Well, I can. But only in a side minigame. <laughs> <laughs> Revenge will be mine. Number 6. Yorda. Yorda literally cannot do a thing. She is the epitome of a helpless side character. And, and I get it, the devs were going for this helpless character you had to try to defend, thus building a relationship of resilience and care. You were responsible for her and her safety, but the problem is, is that this hand-holding mute is more clingy than a face hugger covered in cling film. Yorda. Baby cakes, please just put up something resembling a fight when the shadows of darkness try to lynch your ass. Please? Number 5. Otis Washington As established with Roman earlier on in this list, there are certain times when getting a phone call is about as appreciated as getting a broom handle in the back door. Otis from Dead Rising 1 just loves to wag his whiskered chin, calling you when you're neck deep in zombos or in a desperate tussle with a gang of escaped prisoners. And, and he has the bloody cheek to call you rude should you hang up on him in order to, I don't know, not get infected by the thousands of chompy enemies around you? I get it, Otis, your kids don't call, but Jesus Christ, let me get on with killing the zombie who looks like a much younger version of you. Uh, uh Oh. Um. Oh. Uh. Yeah, Otis? I'm gonna have to call you back. No, you're rude! Number four, your entire team. For a game that's such a blast with friends, Valve sure phoned it in when it came to the Left 4 Dead partner AI. You'll be screaming at the TV for them to throw a Molotov or pipe bomb at the encroaching hordes, only to realize they can't, and while they can sometimes be good at sticking with you, unlike real players, it appears they only do so to get a good look at the hunter shredding you like papers at a corrupt bank during a police raid. The amount of times I've been getting pounded like your mother by a charger only for the group to sit around and watch is unprecedented. It's a testament to complete a level of these games with friends. It's a fucking miracle to do it with the AI. Number 3. Slippy <sighs> you are the worst of all pilots. It seems like you'd have trouble flying a plane that's on autopilot what with all the space skirmishes you seem to get into. The rest of the Star Fox team seems to be pretty competent in comparison. You've got a sassy pants Falco and a rabbit who's seen years of combat experience. So tell me, Slippy, what the hell do you bring to the table? Is it covering everything you touch with your gross ass space frog slime? Because that seems to be about the only thing you're fing good for. Number two, Baby Mario. The crying. The endless. Crying. 
Never before have I wanted to murder a baby more than Mario in Yoshi's Island 2, who wails more than the lead singer of Dragon Force if he'd been shot. You'd end up putting yourself in danger just to shut this dumb plumber up because the noise that would emanate from his squishy body is akin to war crimes. Add to this the fact that he does nothing to help himself. And the question as to why Yoshi can't just leave him at home for a bit until he defeats the big bad at the end of the game is beyond me. It makes me want to get sterilized, I can tell you that. Number 1. Navi Hey! Listen! Hey! Listen! Hey! Listen! Ah! Navi is the definition of an annoying sidekick. She hovers about getting all up in my grill like sweet corn in braces, and doesn't even really like you when you begin your quest thinking that you're lazy and not even up to the task of saving the world. Well, you know what? At least I've got arms and hands, Navi, meaning that I can flip you off every time you jingle about my tunic self. And yeah, out of all of these sidekicks, she's probably the most useful. But that makes it all the more annoying when she's more grating than listening to a Lord of the Rings commentary provided by Gilbert Gottfried and Ray Romano. And that's our list. Got any more sidekicks you want to shoot in their side cheeks? Let us know in the comment section below. And if you want to be my little buddy, then you can catch me here and here. If you enjoyed the video, then like, share and subscribe for more. I've been Jules for WhatCulture.com, and I'll see you soon.